You might be wondering what I am doing with this stick today. Some of you might see this stick as a regular piece of wood, but some might see it as a tool. It can be transformed into a shovel, a spear, or even a spoon. For me, there isn't much difference between this stick and the creatures that live around us. I believe that life can also be transformed into a tool. And I'm here to share my idea with you. Let's go back in time for a moment and be an omniscient narrator in one of these language limited but sentient Neanderthal for a moment. His name is Thag. He just picked up this stick on the way back from his hunt. He thinks, I could hit you, he would say to his friend, but then think, you could hit me back. That wouldn't work. If we were to hit, hit each other, I would starve to death. I need him to help me catch any food. Aha, that creature over there, it looks pretty stupid. And if I get more of these stick, I could build a house around him, like I did for myself. I would feed it, then it would forget it wanted to leave me. It could do my job for me and carry me to faraway places where there are many woolly mammoths to catch. I just have to tell my idea to this hairy fellow beside me. Like this, necessity is the mother of invention. Humans are problem solvers. Our ancestor Homo habilis were known for the ability to craft tools by chipping rocks and turning raw material into a form that they can utilize. And now us, Homo sapiens, are known as wise men who utilize these tools to solve many problems. We make utilities, machineries, telephones, cars, and satellites to help us live a better life. So when we think of problem solving and innovation, we think of engineering. We develop beyond the primitive existence by cognition, thinking, designing, cold, precise, and intricate. When we think of engineering, we think of mathematics, chemistry, and physics, but rarely biology. Like Thag and his epiphany to use a creature to help him, biologists have epiphanic moments that turn into experiments that uses another organism to help them live a better life and develop scientific knowledge. All you have to do is to start seeing life as a tool. Since I was young, I had a weird fascination about life and animal. When I accompanied my parents to the grocery stores, I stayed in the seafood section, observing fishes and crustacean awaiting consumption. When my family went on a vacation, while they were enjoying their breakfast buffet, I was out near the mangrove tree looking for crabs and lizards. I think I was interested in them because they had something that I didn't. Some could live longer, some could fly, some could make food out of sunlight, and some could breathe underwater. If I had their traits, imagine the superhero life that I could have had. I fantasize about living underwater, living in a colony of army ants, living upside down like bats. But I quickly realized that I couldn't do this. So, like Thag, I found alternative ways for me to be like them. I looked for tools through biology, the science of life. And at last, I was able to find a way for me to be like them. I was able to use the traits of another organism to help me live a better life. And today, I'm here to share my secret kryptonite with you, how to use life as a tool. Why not build a perfectly ventilated building with the help of tenacious brood of termites? Or build a perfect school with the help of ants? We could even design a bacteria to help us digest spicy food. Imagine the comfort that you can give to a troop of tourists after their first sampling of Indonesia sambal. Who could have imagined the limitless possibilities at the time of Thag and his hairy friend? But now we have come far enough with our tools now to entertain the idea that life can be used as a tool and in some cases should be used. Today, my friends and I are working to design a gut bacteria that will help diabetic patients produce insulin in their guts. I have never created the bacteria, but I have harnessed it to be used as my tool. When we come, up, when we come across a problem, 
we have to come up with a solution. So we continue to try and fail and repeat it until we find a solution that works. And bioengineering just may be the best solution that we can find. Reverse engineering nature. Life has existed for 3.5 billion years, but humans only existed for 200,000 years. As we evolved, humans are able to understand how life works. And it makes sense, now that we have evolved enough to understand the mechanism of it, we should use the solution from nature itself to help us live a better life. The organism with a better tool and better solution will always have the upper hand. We should learn from this. The man with the most flexible stick, not the biggest stick will prevail, as his stick is not so immutable, not so fixed, not the only solution. Now let's try to look at an example of how humans with flexible stick use the solution from nature to help them solve a problem. The Shinkansen train is known as one of the world's fastest train. It took the design of the kingfisher bird's beak and it allowed it to reach the speed that was impossible before. An Eastgate center in Zimbabwe has an auto-cooling system that is inbuilt that does not require as much energy to cool a whole entire building. It took the design from the termite nest. Now let's try to take problem solving at a cellular level. Through technological advancement, we humans are now able to look at cellular level. We have cystologists and microbiologists who study cells and bacteria. And through genetic engineering, we are able to use them as a tool. When we think of genetic engineering, we often think that it is an extremely complicated process. But today, I'm here to break that paradigm for you. I believe that once you understand the mechanism of it, you'll start to see life as a tool. I like to think of cells as workers in a mini factories. Try to take a look at these cells, muscle cells, neurons, and root hair cells. They have their own specialization to help them do a better job at what they're doing. Root hair cells have large surface area to help them absorb more nutrients and water. Neurons are able to conduct electrical signals, and muscle cells can contract and relax to help us move around. They have their own particular job that they are specialized in, and they work in the particular wing of their factory. How do they know what job they have? The answer is DNA. DNA is code of life, made with adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. They work just like programs and computers. Instead of zeros and ones, they have ATGCs. We share the same genetic language. DNA is present in every living organism. So our cells and the bacteria will be able to reach each other's DNA. And this is how humans use them. We just have to find a gene sequence that we des desire, and we can just cut it and paste it into the bacterium to express the gene that we want. And this can be done in various ways, such as viral transduction, using a virus to insert the genetic material into the bacteria, bacterial transformation, using restriction enzymes and ligases as a pair of scissors and glues to cut and stick the genetic material into the bacteria, and you probably heard of this, CRISPR-Cas9, using a protein to alter the DNA of the bacteria. And my favorite, biolistics, using a gene gun to shoot the genetic material into the bacteria. All these methods are used to introduce a gene sequence, a vector, into the bacteria to give instructions for them. And humans are now able to print these sequences this means that we are able to create our own instruction. We are able to write them and tell DNA, uh, tell cells and bacteria on what to do and how to do. So what can we do with the technology? We can do absolutely anything that we want. We can make new materials like self-healing concrete. We can terraform, turning unfertile soil into fertile soil. And we can make fake meats that does not involve any animals. We can make expensive medicines into a cheaper one. 
We can, we can find bacteria that will help us break down plastics and find bacteria that turns odor into scent. There is no limit to this technology. So now, we are able to use life as a tool. Yet still, like other early phases of sciences, it is not used enough. Like Thag's domesticated creature, the beast has to learn the language of demand. But now, now that Thag has captured the animal, Thag has to come to understand what it is that he wants the beast to do, and how. As more and more technologies are developed, for him, like us, we will get closer and closer into making it, the creature and the cells factory, into a biological tool. The foot of the candle is always dark. Thag's fire only brightened up his friend's shaggy eyebrow. Humans, we have shown a torch in many fields of sciences to help humanity take the next step. But there is much more to be given to contemplative endeavor. And I believe from our journey from Thag's cave reached the point where we cannot find our next step. Now is the time to shine the light on the foot of the candle itself, the base of what we're standing on, life. The secret lies in the domesticating of the creature, making it into a biological tool to make hunt more prosperous and evolution inevitable. DNA is our present day creature to be tamed, understood and utilized to make life easier and science, especially bioengineering, evolve. One of my favorite inventor, Thomas Edison, once said that, I have not failed, I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. If Thomas Edison could visualize life as a tool, all he needed was a bioluminescent organism and a culture of bacteria, then he could probably say, I've just succeeded. I've just found 10,000 ways that works. I believe that Thag must have thought the same thing at his time, if he had the knowledge and the language of life tools that we have today. Thank you, Thag. Thank you, Creature. And thank you, my listeners. May you find your own living stick.